All right, so let's talk about nerves. Um, so we did um, we did uh, ulnar nerve, we did median nerve, and I actually had a great question from Beatrice. Um, I'm actually gonna share her question right now because she had a question on ulnar nerve. And I want you guys to think about it like this, right? So she has an injury with a 33 year old male patient of hers that he's a medical doctor studying to be a plastic surgeon funny enough this is our topic uh he had the injury back in may of 2020 he sustained a deep laceration uh proximal to the wrist so she sent me a picture and um the laceration was right here so you see the laceration very honorably uh, lacerated the ulnar nerve, the artery, and the median nerve had a partial repair as well. So he injured both nerves. So if you have the ulnar nerve and then you have your median, right? So when you're thinking high and thinking low, this would essentially be like a low one, right? Because it's below the elbow. So any muscle, any nerve above that innervated a certain muscles over here. So those muscles will still work. Anything below that laceration won't work. So this is a partial, but I believe this is a full, right? So already in your mind, you, you would be thinking of like what his potential problems are going to be, right? Now, I'm not sure, I believe this is in his dominant hand. Dominant hand, and I'm gonna um, make assumptions that his dominant hand is his right hand, right? So already you should be thinking about setting, uh, setting expectations, right? How do I do this again? How do I set myself? Oh, here it is. Um, In myself to yeah so um, already you would be thinking okay well which nerves are innervated by the ulnar nerve you're thinking about the um, the hype the hypo thener muscles right it's all your small finger muscles you're thinking about certain um, intrinsic intrinsic muscles right um, which is going to affect the grip, right? Because the hand, the ulnar two fingers does all the, the, the power grip for you. So when you start thinking through the muscles, you're going to know that he has decreased grip strength, right? And then also that ulnar nerve, remember, crosses and it's a thumb adductor. So he's going to have a certain problem with pinch. Okay, so we already know when you have a full nerve laceration, the, the, like it's like turning the lights off to the muscles, right? So one of the things that they do is when they repair it, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. They're trying to match the fibers back up. It's like bundles inside bundles inside bundles, right? Think of uh, electric. Uh, uh, wiring right bundles inside bundles inside bundles and they're trying to match it up they're so so small but they're gonna try to match it up as close as possible right as close as possible but what happens when you cut something what are your, some of your problems your problems are gonna be it's not fully not fully matched right your other problem is going to be scarring. You're going to have internal scarring, right? And that scarring there is going to stop the flow of electricity further. When you have a compression, once the, there's a certain amount of nerve death, you can't get that back. Right now, if you release it and there's a certain amount of return, the nerve has a certain amount of um, regeneration, right? And so, um, it's going to regenerate a certain amount, but certain parts that are that died like stay dead. It's 
not like pet cemetery you just can't like oh my i think i just aged myself does anyone know who pet cemetery is like bury the little dead animal and it comes back to life that's not what happens right certain amount of it dies it's dead um and what you're doing is you're just waiting it's in a way it's like a waiting game for how much you're going to get in the meantime that you're waiting for a certain amount to return you've got to keep the joints protected so that it has a chance right so that it has a chance but full, not fully matched and scarring are the two main things that is going to to interrupt how well the nerve can regenerate it's just the nature of the game so compression is one traction is another and then laceration is the worst ulnar nerve type of injury you can have right now the median nerve goes to um the thumb it, it has it affects the thumb quite a bit right so it goes to a lot of thumb muscles so both of these in the low aspect have a lot of intrinsic muscles, intrinsic muscle issues. So intrinsic muscles, whether you're talking about your interossei, your lumbicals, they all help to flex the MP and extend the IP. So at some point he is now May, so that's six, about six or seven months. So he is halfway through his recovery, right? He's halfway through his recovery. Um, he has claw hand, right? He has edema of his hand and forearm. It's this impaired sensation of the fourth and fifth digits. Um, he doesn't have any problems in the back. Why? Because that's a radial nerve. So the median nerve comes to, to these three fingers, but it goes to the tips of the nails after that and the dorsum of the, the hand that's the radial nerve so that would be fine his finger his middle finger presents with flexion of his fingers which is good so so he has the best possible chance here because it was only a partial so he has the best possible chance of a, a, a median nerve and an ulnar nerve laceration is probably one of the worst injuries that you have because both nerves affect how functional you can be so he's um he's able to have a certain amount of grasp and release he's progressing well he's wasting away in the first dorsal interossea that's thumb adduction it's fine um it's expected he's able to oppose to all the fingers the weakness except for the fifth digit he can't um it's because he can't rotate so hypothenar muscles in the ulnar uh, he can't rotate, he can't oppose. So to have opposition work, you have to be able to rotate the thumb and you have to be able to rotate the small finger. Both have um, to work in order to oppose and this is full opposition. Um, so he having to use different treatment techniques is dynamic splinting um, to get the fingers to extend during the day. Anti-claw splint. Um, you're doing therapy, you're doing rubber bands, you're stuck and frustrated with the muscle wasting. Well, first of all, one of the things that I would say is don't be frustrated with the muscle wasting because if you're frustrated, he's frustrated, and then you're all frustrated for no apparent reason, right? You have to set the tone of what sh someone should expect. And let's be realistic here. I don't care if they put your nerves together. There is a certain amount of atrophy, and once that atrophy sets in, it's not it's not going to come back fully so you have to set the expectation of of this is potentially what's going to be happening with your hand what we're going to do is we're going to find the muscles that are returning and focusing on the muscles that are returning and that's going to be your median nerve right so i like that he has a he doesn't have a numbness there right so you didn't mention anything about numbness so i would i would um assume that he is doing pretty well with that so i'd have to look and say okay where what's the median you know what's the median nerve what's the median nerve is the uh, abductor pollicis brevis right the opponent's pollicis which we're hearing that it works um the superficial head of the flexor uh pollicis brevis right so that's coming and the first and second lumbricals right so he can do this 
right? And he should be able to do this with these fingers because it was cut low enough that his uh, profundus and his superficialis is working and his flexor pollicis is longus, thank goodness, right? Thank goodness that, because without the flexor pollicis longus, he, he wouldn't be able to do any of that, right? So we gotta focus on what can you do and you have to set the tone for like, we're going to be working on the things that we see work best and we're gonna make those strong, we're gonna make it as functional as possible, knowing that the ulnar nerves may not have as great of a chance, right? And so the biggest thing here is that you need to make sure that the joints are supple, right? There is no need for a night splint as long as the joints move really well. So if he doesn't have joint stiffness, he shouldn't have that problem. The best thing that you could do is put him in an anti-claw splint and encourage him to wear that all the time during the day. It's the best way to be functional, but it's the best way to give the chance, the fingers, a chance to be in the best position so that when the nerve, as it recovers, it can work. Hey therapy friends, it's Huang here. Thanks again for watching my video. And if you like videos like this that can help you just crush it in the hand therapy world as an occupational therapist, then hit the subscribe button and enjoy the video. Thanks again for watching.